everybody, Monterey, we're Hanson, Hello. and we're coming to visit you and play a concert, <laughs> uh, and we want to see you. I love, I love fajitas. It's more about the spice. The pico de gallo and the, and the you know, guacamole. I love a good mole. You know. Mole. Yeah. You're making us hungry. Let's yeah. stop. Imagine the Hanson with mariachi. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, <laughs> the outfits would be great. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Red, green, and blue mariachi. Yeah, yeah, yeah. ¿Qué tal? Qué gusto y qué placer saludarlo. Nuestros invitados de hoy comenzaron su sueño musical en la cochera de su casa. Hoy, 30 años después, celebran con todas sus fans mexicanas todos los éxitos que han tenido. Soy Uriel Reina y estos son los 15 minutos de fama de Hanson. Bienvenidos. This is the new technology, you know, post pandemic. Yeah, yeah, yes, yes. <laughs> How are you guys? Doing good. You are a producer, right? right? Is it possible in the future have a fusion the Hanson's music with a Mexican uh, sound? Yeah. Is possible? Sure. Yeah. sure. Yeah. Yeah. We, yeah. we don't speak Spanish, so that's always a barrier uh, in the sense of like uh, actually singing in Spanish. We need but a good collaboration. Well, a great uh, artist that speaks Spanish would could do that for you and help you write those lyrics in just the right way. And uh, I mean, that Latin rhythm is, uh, I mean, I'm a drummer. There's nothing like Latin rhythms. I mean, that's where rhythm is. You know? <laughs> that's, Because that's, ima imagine the hands up uh, um, with mariachi, for example. Um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah. the outfits would be great. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Red, green, and blue mariachi. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it'd be great. Got it. Another important project for the handsome, back to the Iceland with, with your fans. The Iceland. The yes. Iceland, yes. But in Jamaica. <laughs> only one time here in Cancun. Why only one time ago? <laughs> yeah. Well, we started... Um, we have a lot of fans that are very, you know, dedicated and have done, you know, big things with us. Okay. And about 10 years ago, we, we started trying the idea of let's do a destination concert. And while we've while we've experimented with it, um, we've done it in different places. One of them was in Cancun, and then we've done mostly in Mex in Jamaica. Um, yeah. A lot of it has to do with really just we found a resort and we found some partners that it, it works really well for that event. And you know we have it's essentially a festival, a private <laughs> festival where everybody is is a handsome fan in some way. We bring some friends that are artists, but. We've gotten a lot of requests to come back to Latin America. So I will say we, nothing against uh, Jamaica, but my favorite food was the year we did it in Mexico. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> we had a lot I was of like, this, this is so much better than Jamaica. What is it? <laughs> oh, it's Mexican food. Oh, of course. That's why I like it so much. Tacos. <laughs> What do you like of the Mexican food? I'm think tacos and fajitas. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I, I, love, I love fajitas. It's more about the spice. It's, about it's more about a little bit of heat. You know, when 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 you, when yeah. you go, you know, where where does the flavor come from in the I, food? I you love know, I love a good mole. You know, mole. Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah, 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 yeah But yeah. I mean, we like the spice. We've we've definitely yeah. grown up close enough to you know influence of mexican food culture for sure in oklahoma mm -hmm. yeah we yeah. like it spicy exactly so and it's always so the, the you always have the freshness of salsas you know you have the pico de gallo and the and the, you know guacamole and things that are very fresh and then you have like you know all, all the great all the great flavors it's yeah. just a little salsa verde you're making us hungry yeah. let's yeah. stop <laughs> So we're on tour. We're celebrating our 30th anniversary, which is amazing. But we also have a brand new album called Red, Green, Blue that's out. And so uh, if you come to a show, you're going to get this mix of kind of everything. You know, 25 years of music uh, from Umbop and Where's the Love and This Time Around and, you know, I Was Born and I, I, sort of high points from every moment in the Hanson career. Mm -hmm. But also, you know, a little bit of the new stuff that people are just now learning and discovering as we celebrate a new album and uh, a great anniversary. And also importantly too, every single show that we play is a little bit different. So there's always something special for the fans in that particular city, because it's important to us that we make each show different and unique, so. Auditorio Pabellón M, it's a new venue for you, right? Because the yeah, last time- here. Yeah. Well, I mean, we love new. I mean, it's fresh, <laughs> it's exciting. It's, you know, one of the great things about touring is even when you're returning to a city, 
um, every night's different. I mean, you you never have the exact same experience, and that's what makes it interesting. One of the things that I think is so important about live music now is everyone has you know zooms and phones and apps and everything. They feel like they can get it at any minute, but a live concert you can't you can't download that you can't stream the the fact that you're in the room with that artist mm -hmm. and for us as as artists being with the fans in the room it just it's an it's a high you know you get the adrenaline rush and, and everybody shares that two hours you know um you're together red green and blue is the favorite colors of uh, taylor <laughs> isaac and Zach. this is true yeah. right <laughs> yeah, it is true. It is true. true. We, we've always been associated with those those colors. Taylor, red, Isaac, green, me, blue. But but also red, green, and blue uh, is a format of color where you can make every single color yeah. with those two colors. And so we, we like the analogy. Not only is it something that's been connected to us for a long time, but um, it, it talks about what this album is and kind of what the band is. Uh, we are just combinations of our different colors. And this album was done in three parts. So there's uh, five songs that are red, five songs that are blue, five songs that are green, and kind of invites people to listen to the band in a new way and, and hopefully, uh, you know, bring new ears to the way they listen to our whole catalog. In this album, for me, have a special song, Child of Hurt. It's an important song about the moment to the world living in the 2020, right? Tell me about yeah. this. Um, well, yeah, I mean, so that Child of Heart was the first song we put out. Um, you know, we put out three singles that each represented different aspects of the album. But I, I do think it's true. Child of Heart does does resonate with the moment we've been in. I mean, we've all gone through. I think our generation will definitely, you know, remember this era. You know, these last two years, you know, very significantly because we're all trying to be, you know, build families, build businesses, build careers, and like everything stopped. And um, so that song is all about trying to not fall into fear and, and to try and be hopeful and to try and sort of remember what that child, you know, that, that childlike view of the world, which is, you know, to take, optimistic. Yeah, to, cha to, to take chances and, you know, kids are afraid too, but when you're in, in your, your youth, you have this sense of possibilities, the sense of, of potential of taking chances. And so... So that yeah, that that song definitely is is about you know not closing up but trying to be hopeful and um, it, it's interesting because it is the first song on the record and then you know the album has a story you know you hear lots of songs that are about looking for meaning looking for purpose and trying to figure out how to make sense of the world. I think people were really forced to look at themselves and and that was a song that was really uh, you know kind of reflecting on how it is to come of age, you know, to come, to become, you know, to step into life and, and be an adult, you know? And interestingly, to be an adult, to, to live and to succeed as a, as a person and as you go through life, you actually have to try and remember that childlike beginning, that, that optimism. Otherwise, you just get tired and you just get pessim pessimistic. Well, and, isn't it really to facing you know, some of the realities of, in some sense, what it is to be, you know, depressed or truly sad and lost and, and looking for purpose in the yeah. world. And sometimes you need that friend, that person, that song, you know, yeah. to to say to you, it's okay. This is not this is not a mistake. Things this will pass and you can make it through this, you know, through this challenging moment. Wow. Yeah. So it was it was written it was written pretty quickly the, the actual song itself but I think a song until it's recorded and put down for the first time I think it's always waiting to, to say it's done so all the process of recording that really contributed to the final message of the song wow. hey guys tell me about the walk yeah. Well, yeah. well we you know the walk was an incredible effort and we had focused less time in the last you know few years um, one, we moved the, we made an impact on a lot of those causes in ways that were significant. And so much of the mission with that um, was really about sparking, inspiring people to see what they can do in their lives. Mm -hmm. And um, and it's been incredible. And, we've and, seen we did, people... and we did, the, we were doing walks uh, for shows, I think, for something like five years. Yeah, five years. I don't know. Honestly, longer, I think longer. longer. Was it even seven? Yeah. Um, so, I mean, definitely very, very proud of that. And, I think the, the spirit of the walks, uh, you know, will continue in the sense that we are always looking for ways to to spark uh, people, encourage them to really do the most that they can with 
their talents and their, you know, their life. Like there's this song called I Was Born, you know, which we play in most shows. And it's a song about this idea that, you know, each of us has a role to play, right? Each of us has something unique. And in a way that that spirit is one of the most, the, the things I'm most proud of to, to, to say each night is, hey, you know, you're you, you can do amazing things. And the walks, you know, we saw people really be very generous with their time. We, we've helped drink clean water wells, helped raise and provide medicine for women that had HIV that helped them not transmit that disease. I mean, like I amazing. for kids. Yeah, so cool. So, I mean, we, we continue to look for ways to, to inspire people to make the most with their talents and very humbled by that. Do you have plans for a new uh, album? Is possible right, for right. the fans? <laughs> well, you know, this last year in 2020, we released an album called Against the World and in 20, uh, 20 uh, sorry, 21 and 21. 22. Yes. Yeah, 21 and, and then 22, we released uh, Red, Green, Blue. So right now our, our focus really is on this this record. I mean, there will there are other projects, other things we're always sort of planning and thinking for what comes next, but, but really trying to enjoy this moment. It's been such a long time coming with this time with no concerts, no ability to be with fans that I think it's important to kind of memorialize certain moments and reaching 30 years and celebrating this record. And uh, this will be the most extensive tour we've ever done. Uh, more shows in Mexico than any other tour we've ever done. Um, more than 90 shows across the globe. And so we're kind of living in this moment, trying to hold on to that and let it be the focus just before we start thinking about what comes next.